Super Rugby, Aotearoa, round number 10. The first of the two dead rubbers this weekend. Um, I mean, they, they, none of these sides are going to say it's a dead rubber, but essentially it's a dead rubber. Uh, the Hurricanes and the Highlanders, it's the battle of the cellar dwellers with fourth against fifth, although the Highlanders could pass the Blues if they were to get a win. Uh, they're fourth with three and four, whereas the Hurricanes have had the worst record of the lot. Uh, one and six, which is only marginally better than what the Chiefs had last year when they went winless. But some close games, like similar to the Chiefs last year, even though they couldn't get wins, they've still had some pretty close games, losing bonus points and whatnot. So um, I don't think this is a competition where there's like a team which is terrible up against Giants kind of thing. Everyone's within touching distance of each other. That's That's a good thing to see. But all that being said, this is a battle of fourth against fifth in their final game for both of them before we kick off Super Rugby Trans-Tasman. They did meet in round six. It was the Hurricanes' only win. It was an away win down in Dunedin, 30 points to 19. So if there's something for the Hurricanes to be optimistic about, it's the fact that they've beaten these guys before. Uh, both sides have named relatively stable lineups, and I guess that's... I mean, you might think last game of the season, nothing on the line, throw some of the, the youngsters in. But with Trans-Tasman on the way, I guess they want to try and keep some of that continuity going. So Numia, Coles, and Lomax for the Hurricanes. That's their front row. Blackwell, Scrafton. I think that's the same front row as last week. They were getting bullied at scrum time, so it's an area they will have to improve. Uh, Princev, Karifi, and Flanders will make out the rest of the back row. Remember, Ari Savi is out for quite some time. Karifi is a tackling machine. Uh, as always, he just needs to watch the penalty counts and he'll be fine. Uh, Campbell and Love is the 9-10 combo. I think I said it, at least I said it privately. I may not have said it publicly before the start of the season that I was concerned uh, for the Canes and that their 9-10 combo, even before they got injuries, was looking a bit a bit shaky compared to some of the other teams. And maybe that's that's been the case. They are such crucial positions with no Pedernada, even Garden Bishop and Hickey and whatnot, all injured. Uh, Pedernada's in Japan. Um, yeah, it's just too much for, for some of the youngsters to to, to get go for it. But also, you know, the four backs got to take some responsibility as well. But like I said, they haven't been terrible. So maybe you can take some solace in the fact that the Chiefs side, who went poorly last year, have already kind of backed up the season after. So maybe they're not too far away. Uh, Lomapi and Proctor, 12-13. Proctor gets a start this week from the bench last week. Uh, Rayasi, Savia, that's Julian, and uh, Jordy Barrett make out the back three. Jordy Barrett's probably been the best of the Hurricanes players, but that's a tough position to be the best in if you're looking at All Blacks honours because there's some other pretty good fullbacks in New Zealand. Uh, the bench, Amua, Armstrong, Fido are there, Wukalia Wede. Um, there's a potential debut, I think, for Patafilo. Uh, Umunga Jensen's there as well. For the Highlanders, again, it's pretty stable. Johnston and DeGroote swap places. So Johnston gets a start this week. Uh, Dixon Tokolahi make up the front row. I've been impressed with Tokolahi for most of the season. Uh, Bryn Evans, likewise, has been pretty good. Pretty dynamic ball-carrying lock. And Josh Dixon next to him. All right, Frizzell, Harmon, and Jimeno. And if you're looking for standout players from the Highlanders, apart from Aaron Smith, uh, Frizzell's probably been a guy who's really put his hand back up after dipping last year. Uh, big time improvement from him. Very pleasing to see. Harmon's been doing some good work at the breakdown and his tackle counts are good uh, now that he's getting more minutes from his move from the Crusaders. And Jimeno has really stepped up to the plate well. He's not excelled in any one area. He's been good at the breakdown. He's had high tackle counts and a decent ball carrier. So he's been a really good addition. Hope he's enjoyed his time in Super Rugby and hopefully he's a better player for it. Uh, Smith and Hunt's the 19 combo and you would certainly prefer them to the, the Hurricanes lot just in terms of experience, especially. Uh, Gregory and Tompkinson is the midfield. Nareki, who's been the most kind of live wire of the um, of the Highlanders' backs. Uh, Gilbert gets his first game of the season, back from injury. And uh, Josh Iwani at fullback. Connick's on the bench. They'll be Rick and Hamilton. Collins, so it's a 6-2 split. they got Lynches and Renton, two Lucy's on the bench. Michele, too, is injured. Punivai is injured, so a few changes. Uh, the head-to-head -head stuff... Neither of these sides has been great at generating clean breaks. Fourth, the Hurricanes. Fifth, the Highlanders. They've got 53 and 52 clean breaks, respectively. To put that into context, the Blues are third, and they've got 65. So there's a, a gap between these guys and the teams above them. Uh, run meters, they're also fifth and fourth. So that probably links in partly to clean breaks. 
Uh, tackling percentages, they're in 1% of each other, so they're, they're pretty solid in the mid-80s. Uh, line-out percentages, interestingly, the Highlanders are pretty good there. They're the second-best team, 91%, whereas the Hurricanes, as evidenced in a few times recently, Dane Coles' throwing has been a bit, been a bit off. Uh, they are fourth with 83%, so almost a 10% difference in their line-out accuracy, which could be an area of concern. Uh, offloads, fourth and fifth, fourth and fifth, so... Yeah, it's not been a big part of either of their games. Um, yeah, yellow card seven for the Hurricanes, three for the Highlanders, and I think that's first and second. So the Hurricanes have been getting slammed with yellow cards this season. Uh, key players, I already mentioned Frizzell. He's got the most carries in Super Rugby Aotearoa. He's six for defenders beaten. He is a proper unit of a player this year. Uh, Laumapi is fourth for carries in Super Rugby Aotearoa, but he doesn't even appear in the top guys list for defenders beaten. That's not something he's been doing. I've been harping on about this, and I hope people are also kind of cottoning on to that fact. He's not been busting tackles. He's up there for clean breaks. He's up there for run meters, but he's not been busting through people. I'm not sure if he's just getting old, if he's carrying an injury. Someone mentioned ever since he was he broke his hand or something. Not quite been the same. Or maybe he's just shifting his game to be more of a, a player that he thinks the All Blacks will look favorably on instead of just a big wrecking ball. We've, we've talked about it a lot, but I do think the stats show us that his game has shifted. I mean, you can see it with your own eyes, but the stats back that up. Uh, Dixon and uh, Blackwell are the two line-out guys for both sides, so they will have to both be on form. But as I mentioned, the Highlanders' numbers are generally a lot better. The game is on Friday at 7.05, so it's a uh, pretty standard kickoff time. Hopefully it should be a good game. The bookies have got the Hurricanes by three. And Rugby Forecast algorithm goes a step further and says the Hurricanes by six. So yeah, certainly a lot of pride on the line. And like I said, going into Super Rugby Trans-Tasman, they will want to keep some kind of form. So neither side is just going to want to roll over and treat this one casually, even if there is nothing really on the line. Hopefully it's a good game. Hopefully both teams chuck it around a bit. But um yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts. How do you think this one is going to go? Do you think the, the Hurricanes can get their second win? Or do you think the Highlanders will finish with kind of a 50-50 record 4-4? Four four? You guys let me know your thoughts. Like the video if you manage to get all this way through because that helps grow the channel. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.